Greetings. Welcome to today's Underworld reading, whatever day you find this. Um, I'm so excited to dive in. Been loving doing these readings. Welcome if this is your first time and welcome back if you've been present for one of my readings before. <laughs> I hope they've really benefited you and I'm super honored that you have returned. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with the structure of these readings, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these cards from the Blind Spot Oracle deck and I'm going to pull um, whatever Blind Spot is affecting us and whoever is watching the most right now whenever you find this video. And then we're going to get some clarifiers for how it's showing up. And I kind of decide how I'm going to do that as I'm reading about the Blind Spot. Sometimes I do a spontaneous inside the reading pick a deck. Sometimes I just pick one card and talk about it. And I think one time I even just pulled this card and um, was able to get like 20 minutes worth of information um, just from that. So we will see what happens. I actually feel like the top one today, which is interesting. So we're going to go with that. I usually kind of spread them out, but I felt that as soon as I flipped it over. And I don't take, I love to take the cards that kind of jump out and I don't do that with this deck particularly. It is, um, made to be selected um, rather than to take a jumper so uh, we have 61 here if you guys are new um then just know that this is a sigil opening us up to the opposite of the blind spot so if this reading really heavily resonates then you can go ahead and screenshot i'll move my nail out of it <laughs> um and then you can work with the energy and the visual of this sigil you can meditate on it and work with it to help you open up um the opposite of this that we are about to uncover right now. Ooh, temporality, how interesting, okay. All right, here we go. Temporality, I haven't, I haven't worked with this one yet, so this is new and fun for me. <laughs> All right, if you have drawn this sigil, what is preventing your progression is that I, you are either too attached to the temporal in general or to an aspect of the temporal. This has caused you to lose sight of the bigger picture, which includes much more than the temporal world. You might be looking, actually, I wanna make sure you guys see what temporal means. They're naming like temporary, like temporal, T-E-M-P-O-R-A-L. Just in case I'm not um, enunciating that very well, I wanted to make sure you guys knew exactly what I was saying. So let me back up to the second, um, to the second sentence now that I clarified that. This has caused you to lose sight of the bigger picture, which includes much more than the temporal world. You might be looking for a solution that does not exist in the temporal world. That is like looking for a lost key, but being convinced that the key is somewhere in one specific room and never finding it because the key you are looking for is not even in that room. The temporal world is a world of the purely physical. It is particles, body, color, shape, soma, physical health, and the physical aspect of sex, money, houses, places, things, the physical aspect of food, plants, people, pets, possessions, etc. It is the realm of the material. If you have drawn this sigil, you may be so invested in the physical and provable and rational and even potentially the type of science that is purely focused on physicality and those same things that you have forgotten that there is more to the universe than meets the eye. The physical world may seem secular, but it isn't. The physical world is not separate from spirit. It is a manifestation of spirit. You are denying the majority of the universe and actually the majority of yourself if you have invested in this way. Because of this, you might be more skeptical than you should be. By closing down your mind, you become unable to express other potentials and other realities. You become selectively inner ignorant. Perhaps this sigil is calling you into open-mindedness and even faith. To have faith is to have positive confidence or trust in something. It is to think something is true, even without proof. The famous philosopher Bertrand Russell once said, where there is evidence, no one speaks of faith. We do not speak of faith that two, that two, sorry. We do not speak of faith that two and two are four or that the earth is round. We only speak of faith when we wish to substitute emotion for evidence. Unfortunately for Bertrand Russell, he was forgetting something. The first person who believed the earth was round, enough to be motivated to set out to prove that it was round, had to go on faith before there was proof to back up that belief. Many people believe that faith is the absence of doubt. This could not be further from the truth. 
We only think that faith is the absence of doubt when we confuse faith with knowing. To doubt is to have uncertainty about something. Faith cannot exist in a universe of certainty because certainty is knowing. Faith is not required when we know. And so if doubt is uncertainty, doubt is a necessary condition of faith. If we take doubt a step further and let down and let doubt mean what it means emotionally to most people, to doubt is to consider something unlikely. And this is to act as if you know something that you do not know. It is to bring a sense of certainty to a universe of uncertainty. For this reason, doubt is the flip side of faith. If you have drawn this sigil, you may also be suffering because of your attachment to some aspect of the temporal. Perhaps it is your social status, someone else's success, or state of being in the physical world right relative to temporal matters, the way your body looks, your job, paying the bills, things you possess or want to possess, your house, your city, your culture, your physical health, the physical aspect of self, and so on. This sigil has come to tell you that the answer you seek does not lie in the physical and that you are being limited by a fixation on some aspect of the physical. It is like being so focused on the tree that you forget the forest. The thoughts causing your over-identification with that aspect of the physical must be questioned. It is time to invest your focus in the higher perspective and truth that comes with the awareness that transcends physical life, space and time, and all the things in it. Okay. The thoughts causing your over-identification with that aspect of the physical must be questioned. Okay, that's where we're going to dig into. So, what thoughts? I'm going to do a three-card pick-a-deck again. So, pick a number one through three. We're going to have one right here, two right here, three right here. And um, I have such a hard time shuffling these with these claws, but let's see if I can get it. I lost one, but... <laughs> I lost a claw. Never, never lose these claws. All right, so pile one. What temporal thoughts are they fixated on? Okay, community. Pile two. What temporal thought are they fixated on? I'm not going to take that many. Pile two. What temporal thoughts are they fixated on? Oh, interesting. Okay. So overemphasis on perfectionism. And then pile three. What temporal thoughts is pile three fixated on? Money and financial matters. Okay. So I'll leave this out just in case we clarify. So these are all pretty straightforward. This will probably be, <laughs> I was going to say it'll probably be a short reading, but who knows? You guys know when I start going. Um, it could turn into 40 minutes. So the first pile here the hyper focus on the temporal is in expecting everything to be forever. You know, I've had friends like this in the past where it's like, and I guess I don't, I've had a part of me like this, but it shows up way more in romantic relationships than with friendship where it's like, oh, we're forever friends. You know, we're forever friends. And for me, it's like in a romantic relationship, it's like, if I don't know for sure that this person is in it forever, like I, I won't even take a step. And it's like, well, life changes and you can't really ever determine that and all you can ever really have is probability you actually can't really have certainty because that person is always going to have free will and so this is such a focus on the temporal in that you're trying to force friendships to be forever and this sort of gives the energy of like you remember when we were young and like we went to church camp and we would meet someone and we'd literally be like oh my god we're totally gonna be best friends forever like I will never forget about you I will never leave you I love you and it's like some people actually never graduated out of relating to each other in that way it's like they'll meet someone very quickly or they'll meet someone and very quickly like try to push the relationship to forever and and I'm saying for like forever is in air quotes because this is temporal, like people will come and go. And a lot of that isn't really, like I said, in our ability to decide, like we don't get to decide for other people. 
their choices. I feel like this temporal focus is in trying to create a community that you know is never, ever, 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 ever going to leave you. And all you can really have is the probability and, and build trust over time and to trust your intuition to take you into the relationships that are aligned with you in that moment. And no matter what, the reality is that's always going to happen anyways. Like whoever you're around is the match to your inner template. Like it's sort of, I sort of see relationships. This is so funny. I actually saw this in a dream last night where I was teaching this in a dream. It's like, oh man, I wish I had my um whiteboard to do this, but it's like, actually, should I grab it? No. Okay. So it's like they intertwine. Okay. So it's like this where you'll have like, imagine these little lines going this way. And then there's these lines going this way. And it's like you overlay and intertwine with people whose template matches. It's literally like they weave together and it, it just fits. And whoever you're fitted with right now is a frequency match to you in some way. And so I think that this is twofold. It's like you're rejecting the truth of the parts of you that are aligned with the people you are around and you're wanting so badly for a different experience of life out of that rejection that you're you're meeting someone whose template you enjoy and you're actually losing the ability to connect with them because you're coming on so strong and controlling that you're basically like this is sort of it's funny I'm seeing like the Passover where it's just like drink this cup in remembrance of me, like drink this cup of suffering and, and choose to never leave me and forsake me. And it's like that energy you're bringing to the table is with so much pressure. You have such a, a fear of abandonment here that it's like this hyper focus on meeting, um, not just commitment because the commitment would be the positive side of this. And you're in sort of the shadow side of commitment, which is like requirement and control and um, pressure like you're pressuring these people and so if you it for this pile what I would say is just allow and accept and release the pressure on the people around you they will stay as long as they will stay and they will go and they will go and there's this ultimate trust you can seek into that's like you aren't ever alone and you're if your template is woven in a way that's open to community and relationship you're always going to have someone else weaving like interweaving and intertwining with you but it's like the more you resist that it's like control sort of um locks in our ability to weave with someone and it's like the openness that allows someone to come and intertwine you see what I'm saying where it's like if my expectations if I'm like this no one can come in and intertwine there's no space so that openness allows someone to come in and like build something with me and create something weave a, a tail together and so op that openness is gonna help you weave into that and it's like it's going to create a more fruitful and abundant harvest I'm really drawn to this like pumpkin down here and these grapes like there's really so many opportunities for sweetness here and for really nourishing relationships it, if if you would open and release them and and maybe even this looks like having conversations with the people in your life like help me understand the ways I come across as controlling help me understand the things I do when you isolate and you don't want to show up is that me showing up with pressure is that me like sometimes it just is what it is like me and my friends were I'm just sort of in this phase and they are too where it's like you know, we just won't respond for a few days at a time because we're all in seasons where we're really stretching our artistic ability. We're all kind of ex um, exiting hermit mode together and, and, and creating like new ways of relating. And so it's super understandable. So I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about really natural ebbs and flows. I'm talking if you really relate with this and you know that people are you're pushing people away due to your control. That's different than just the natural flow of like, a, a relationship or a conversation this gives the energy of like I need you to respond in xyz way or else I feel terrible about myself like that is what we're addressing here and so if that's you then that pressure is absolutely coming across in your relationships and and due to the law of what is it um uh it's not one of the seven hermetic principles it's another one it's like a law of it's not the law of attraction either reciprocity I think where it's like if what you're doing is chasing after something you actually repel it with your energy and if this person is chasing it's gonna like naturally repel which if you open up it it's gonna just create a nice dance and so 
it's being aware of the ways that you're seeking like with your claws right just trying to get your claw seek your claws into someone and make them stay and when if when you open up and release control they're actually going to want to be around you more so I want that for you I want you to have these healthy relationships I'm not trying to have you remove them from your life it's just the energy shift in your body and in your mindset and in the way that you carry yourself will open the possibility of that closeness and that is actually determined by your energy okay so that's there for pile two. I think you're focused too much on your pain. Even coming to these readings, because we've got this, I always leave these cards in my decks and I just consider them as part of the deck, you know, like it's, I don't know, I get, maybe that's goofy to other readers, but, um, I just always, I, I've always done that, uh, especially with my, um, the actual proper tarot cards that have these. So it's like, I think you're coming to readings because you're so obsessed with healing your pain as opposed to actually taking these swords out of your back and standing up. Like, it's really weird in this situation. Obviously, this Ten of Swords is trauma, pain. Um, it can tend to be nightmares these things that haunt us from the past in this energy i'm sort of feeling that like this this person could get up and all 10 of them would kind of fall off in one fell swoop which i've never is never an energy that i've read on this card but for you oh man i just super want to give you a hug because i'm not saying this pain isn't there it absolutely is look at these swords like i can see the swords and i can feel them and i actually think you're much further along in the healing journey than you think this gives the energy of like the hypochondriac it's like you're a spiritual hypochondriac that's what it is wow i've never noticed that before i've never pinpointed that or been able to articulate that before but it's like you know when you go to the hospital over and over for like a runny nose it gives the energy of someone who like or someone who got cancer treatments and is like well but keeps showing up like for chemo and the doctors are like what are you doing here and they're like oh, i'm here for some more chemo and it's like you already finished your rounds like you're you're finished now like you're in uh what's it called that phase of um I apologize for my ignorance in this moment I I know that there's a phase of um when you have just finished your treatment and there's like a phase of like let's see if it's going to come back or not like you're even past that phase um whatever that term is I know you guys know what I'm talking about so again I, I do apologize I don't mean to be insensitive um, but I'm just, I wanted to say remission. Is that right? Remission? Oh, that feels right, but I could be wrong. But I'm going to go with it. Um, because it does feel right in this moment. And just, I, I, you'll just have to forgive me that I can't think of that proper topic. Um, and sending lots and lots of love to anyone who does find themselves in that physical state. Um, sending you hugs, hugs from afar. And I totally believe in your full recovery. Um, and I love you beyond reason. And, but this is like a spiritual form of that, where it's like, you've already finished your rounds, you've already gone through the phase that's sort of like remission, if I'm getting that correct. And like, you just keep coming back for, to fix something that's actually already been fixed, to heal something that's already been healed. Or you know what else it gives the energy of? It's like if you had a cut on your arm and you put that like, you know, that cream on it to like, help it heal quickly. And it's like, it's healed and you just keep putting the cream on. And, and like you keep going to the store and keep buying more of this cream and it's like there's no cut there anymore and, and this is sort of like too i'm feeling um there's this term called phantom pain which occurs when um the brain sends pain signals to a part of the body but that pain literally isn't there so it happens in a lot of amputees experience where the pain will actually like let's say my arm is like amputated and like the pain the brain is actually sending signals of pain to like this part of my energy like if that doesn't just like give us an idea of energy work I don't know what does but it's like it will literally keep sending pain as if my hand is in pain and my brain is receiving messages of my hand being in pain but my literally my arm isn't even there so there are ways to work with this to where you get the brain to agree with and 
um, come into an understanding that the pain it's receiving is literally phantom pain. They call it phantom pain. You can like look this up. It's so wild. And I feel like you have spiritual phantom pain here. I think that your trauma is really well alchemized. I think that your backlog is fairly well cleared. I think you're in such a better position than you think that you are. And you keep coming to these readings expecting a, like a big shift that has already happened. Like the shift that's needed here is actually for you to just stand up. And the temporal focus here is on your spiritual pain. Like even in the spirit realm, not everything is permanent. And so it's like that experience that you had was temporary and it's finished. And now you get to stand up and experience something new now. It's sort of like I'm also seeing in this sigil. It's like there was this part of your experience that was the painful part. And then there was a, that like a break. And now you're in this experience still trying to do what you needed to do over here and it's like but i'm over here now so why am i still doing these things from this other time do you do you feel me like you know like why do you still keep showing up to the hospital like your cancer treatment's finished like why do you keep rubbing that oil like there's no cut there anymore like it's that same vibe of like you know and i realize this is even kind of like shooting my own self in the foot as these are my readings but it's like i almost want you to just stop <laughs> with my readings or anyone else's because you're actually so much more well than you think that you are and a season of integration and living as if like like the affirmations of like there's a part of me even though there's still a part of me other parts of me that are healing there's a part of me that's fully well there's a part of me that's completely whole and letting that part of you get into the driver's seat and run the show so to speak for a little while I think would be a really healthy correction for you to get out of this energy of of being stuck in this healing cycle that is complete and that you're just kind of still choosing to go around and run on the merry-go-round on is sort of how I feel um okay and then with pile three here transition breath sip of water <laughs> okay oh, I just realized I didn't put my little skull thing on for these oh well um Okay. okay, this is interesting. So this is someone who is really focused on their finances in a way that's taking all the fun out of the process. So I, I see her as like, she's supposed to be like the really abundant, you know, confident thriving in the garden but right here I'm really feeling her energy is super downtrodden I don't know if that's meant to be read into her story or not but it's like look there's like a little bunny frolicking and there's these gorgeous mountains and a garden and she's holding a big pentacle she's on a throne and she just looks sad um and so this isn't gender specific I'm just using her as the example because it's uh, the queen here but no matter how you identify who you are I get the sense that you've built or your focus is on building something such that you've actually sucked the fun out of it. And it's like, well, you wanted to build something and develop more of a financial structure and stability in your life so that you could enjoy your life more. But the way you're going about that process is actually removing you from enjoyment. And you're focused so much on the finances and on the bottom line, on the dollar amount, is this temporary thing that is like removing you from the joy all that is actually all around you this gives the energy of like you know this sort of gives the energy of like I have nine out of ten of what I want but I'm so focused on that one I don't have that I can't even enjoy the nine I do have and it's like well instead of focusing on the one you don't have focus on the nine you do have because the whole point of this journey you decided to go on this journey to increase your number, to increase your financial abundance was meant to open you up to, you know, enjoying life more, right? Like it's more fun to not be in debt and to, or to have really good debt you're confident about, right? Um, it's more fun to have that experience and to just have overflow and more than enough than it is to not have enough and be scraping the bottom of the barrel, like obviously. So, or I should say it's a more enjoyable experience. So, it's like you wanted that because it was a more enjoyable experience and whether or not you have that yet, you have part of it. 
and you're so focused on the not having than the do having that it's like you're in the space of frolicking and just downtrodden. And so this is an invitation to lift your eyes. Like if she were to look up, she would see this cute little bunny. She would see the gorgeous flower. She's under a canopy of like this gorgeous foliage. Like look at just the scene and the setting is so delicious. I feel like it's kind of dark. Let me get my fingers out of the way there. Like this scene is so cute and so fun, but like she just looks so sad. It's like if she would literally just lift her eyes and see what's all around her, she would just enjoy her day to day more and probably manifest all the rest of what she wants quicker as well. Okay, Whew. that one was fun too. A little heavy. These have been lately a little bit, but um, I hope that they've been really helpful and really honored that you guys are showing up to this. I um. Yeah, I, I I feel like this structure of doing readings works for me so much. Like I knew that I, if I just kept working with how, like not just what I'm doing, but how I'm doing it, that like eventually I wouldn't be able to stop. And this is such a good example. Like I can't stop doing these readings. I love them so much. So um, I hope you're loving receiving them as much as I'm loving making them. And definitely if this resonated and was helpful, please hit that like button and shoot me a little comment to let me know how it benefited you and subscribe to my channel. Hit that little bell icon if you want to never miss another video moving forward. I uh, channel heavenly beings and underworld creatures and I do the occasional teaching video either on spiritual entrepreneurship or rituals or productivity and lots of different varied topics. So um, yeah, if you want to not miss one of those, then subscribe, hit that bell icon. And then if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do have an option for you to book a reading in the description box below. I am offering personal tarot readings, astrology chart readings, both one and two hours. And um, yeah, like I said, you can book those in the description box below. They are all sent via MP3. So they're not live calls. We don't hop on Zoom. I don't call you. I just do the reading on my own time so that I can really focus on um, getting clear on the energy and bringing through the most in important information that I possibly can and so that you have that mp3 for um you know lifetime access so you will always have that mp3 you can download it straight off of the email that I send you and then that reading can continue to serve you and I have people I've done readings for years ago who say they continue to benefit them and they just keep unraveling in, in more and more ways so I'm really honored by that and I would love to help you in that way if you are able um, to book that and there's also links to connect with me on my other social media platforms there's my instagram link my tiktok and my linkedin link and on linkedin i am actually uh channeling money so that's been really fun i would love to connect with you on there and so if you are an entrepreneur definitely connect with me on there to see my daily readings they're just five minutes they're super fast because they're for entrepreneurs and we're all busy um and if you aren't an entrepreneur, but you know someone who is, then definitely send them um, my information so that they can get those readings. They are exclusive. They're only on that platform. On my Instagram, I do some live readings that are exclusive to that platform as well. And then on my TikTok, I do just little clips of my teachings, plus some get ready with me and like more fun and frivolous, lighthearted lifestyle stuff. So if you just want kind of a more look into who I am and what my life is like, then that would be the place to connect with me there. And no matter what, I will hope to see you again for another reading. Again, thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate your time and attention. I love you beyond reason and I trust you with you.